Let's drink beer It makes my mind clear It takes me away from here Let's drink beer And let's drink beer Hope you talk, lift it up, drink it up Hey guys, welcome to the Art of Beer. What are we drinking next? I think we'll move over to some uh, Big Iron Brew House, Graham's Pilsner. Good choice. Let's get that crack in. Right on. I love these guys. They're the best. Yeah, you can't, I mean, what they do up there and just their styles, the quality that they constantly produce, it's amazing. And then there's such good people up there too. Amazing, yeah. You know, up there in Waimea, they're kind of, out of the way, but their beers are always coming out killer. Cheers. 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 And then Gra Graham's Pilsner is just an amazing Czech Pilsner. You, you, they don't get the style very much often here, but oh my god, it's mm. always so good. This is this is one when you get it on draft. It's amazing. I bet. What I like too about these guys is that they've been brewing. Tom's been brewing so beer for so long. You know, he started in Oregon and moved been in Hawaii since the '90s. Is that he's he's kind of got his styles down. And he knows what he's making and. It's really consistent and really delicious. It always goes with food. Oh yeah, it's a total food beer. I mean, Absolutely. I remember the first time I tasted the Sea of Cacao, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what would you What would you pair that with? Because that's a, that's meat. a trick. Meat, yeah, absolutely. You, it, uh, it's clearly like, obviously it's like a dessert beer. It could be, but like, it's also umami. So it pairs with things like pork and venison and lamb and beef. And It'd be like um, style of meat, would you get some char on it, like grilling it? So oh, it absolutely, kind of, yeah. and you just want, you want a little bit of that, you want something almost bitter to like pick up all that character in the beer, you know, so. I guess it makes sense to I me, mean, think of like a, like a mole, right? Where mm -hmm. it's got that chocolate and sweet, it's sweet, savory, bitter, yeah. all those things going on. I guess that's sort of the same thing going on in that beer, right? When he uses those pink peppercorns, so he, he harvests those from the Big Island. They're always sourced from the Big Island, so it always comes out in November or early December. So it's it's that time of year when you're braising meats anyway. You've got those big char. Like, or it'd be really good with like a super creamy, cheesy pasta. Oh, yeah. I yeah. can see that too. The, yeah. The richness, like any, the richness of the cream with mm -hmm. that. Lots of garlic, you know, like it would just crush it. <laughs> yeah, where is that? <laughs> Where's my mac and cheese? Yeah, not coming in. <laughs> so, chef, how do you how do you treat beer in in your restaurants? How do you what are your what guests are looking for? So, I have a brunch restaurant. Well, I have two brunch restaurants right now, and so I really can't. I found that over time, I can't really bring in those super heavy IPAs, those super bitter hoppy beers, because it just doesn't go with the food. So we have definitely done very well with lighter styles. Um, I feature pretty much almost all local beer. Um, but I have some, uh, you know, a great variety and it's like we have lagers, I have pilsners, we have a couple different IPAs. Um, and interestingly enough, people ask for stout every now and then. Um, just, but we're right in the harbor and sometimes I'm like, God, it's like 100 degrees out. Like, I don't want a stout. Why would you want a stout right now? <laughs> Stick but to yeah, it. yeah, they come in, they want really heavy beer. Um, but it's been, I think what's really interesting now is like all these hard seltzers on the market, kind of like muddying, like watering down the beer market. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Do you find, are you finding people coming in and, and that in the early morning to lunch crowd asking for a seltzer? Yeah. Really? They want the hard seltzer. They just, it's like the new style wine cooler without, you know, it's like, I find yeah. a lot of the hard seltzers to be kind of like the the crop, you know. Yeah. It's just kind of just you're missing just a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> so as a, as as an owner, you feel I mean you're kind of forced to go with the demands of the customers. So I mean like to For find sure, out what you For sure, but you know, it's also you don't want your customers getting hammered on a nine percent beer, True. you know. So it's like we have lighter styles that pair well. We keep the prices low so people can have multiples and. Um, you know, I try and change it up seasonally, um, so I'm constantly switching out my cans. Uh, we have a couple American classics mixed in, so I've got like Paps Tall Boys. I have uh, High Life in the bottle. Um, we've got the Green Bottle, the Heineken for the the local boys. So um, I have all those things, but then everything else draft, um, and a lot of my cans are are Hawaiian breweries locally produced. So. 
You want to, anything more like a, like wheat forward? I'd say so that's like when I have brunch, that's the style I'm looking for. Just like you know, real weedy beers. I think that we do. We have like, uh, we do the, well, the, the mono wheat is a little bit crisper than yeah. say like a traditional like creamy style wheat, but we do have the Cavallo cream ale from yeah. okay. HBD yeah. and like people love that. Yeah. And it's just perfectly light. It's got a little bit of creamy, a little bit of yeastiness on the taste. Yeah. Tastes yeah. like it's, a breakfast beer. It's, it's <laughs> real brunchy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do think a little splash of orange juice and a beer mosa with those wheat beers is oh, kind of like the so perfect good. breakfast beer too. So speaking of beers, why don't you guys go grab another one? We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back in a minute. Bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive the Star Advertiser digital full access subscription for just $9.95 per month. Go to StarAdvertiser.com and click on subscribe. Use the code AHI THING. We're back with the Art of Beer and let's open another beer. Yeah, let's open uh, the next Pilsner from Big Island Brew House. It's Vivo Pils. So this one's awesome. Um, it's an Italian style Pils, which um, you know, Pilsners weren't invented in Italy by, by any means, but um, what's really cool about the Italian style Pilsners is they're, um, they're really light, they're really crisp, and they've got a lot of back-end hops on them. So they have a ton of floral, kind of spicy hop notes. It's not bitter by any means, um, but they're meant to be really, really crisp and bright. To me, this is a fantastic poo-poo beer. Um, because it's got that zing of hop character. Mm. It's light malt, tons of flavor, and it's just like. This beer and one of these. Oh, yeah. The you just need to have it has to be just, ice cold, though. Yes, yes. It has to be ice cold. Yeah, and it's a fantastic style, and it's <laughs> kind of taking over. Like a lot of the craft breweries are all doing them now. And, and Tom, what's cool about the, the head brewer um, up there is he's been to the brewery that kind of created the style in Italy, and he, that used to be, you know, Pre-pandemic, it was uh, an annual thing. He would go to a, this beer festival in that, that town of Italy, um, and it, it was a passion of his. And, and then all of a sudden, he came out with it, and it's like it's a picture-perfect version of it. Also, we were talking earlier about like the tariffs have kind of slowed down some of the imports yeah. from Italy. So you, to get these Italian-style beers, you almost have to go find someone who's making a really good version locally. Yeah. Yeah. This is perfect with salted meat. Yeah, the, the, we, <laughs> as we as got I, it I once. smelled it, I was like, I need one of these. I need a beef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't get the, the 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 beer that it's modeled after. It's called Tipo Pills, and you can't get it in the U.S. anymore just be, because of the you know those, some of those tariffs, and they can't send it in anymore, which is kind of a shame. But I mean, we got this that's you know brewed a hundred miles away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll drink to that. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Cheers. So what are you seeing at, at your restaurants as far as you know um, what people what people are wanting? What's the biggest demand as far as on the beer side, like wh what they want to have with their meals? What's the what's the most popular style? I mean, lagers are our most popular style. We're right in Lahaina, so it's like super hot. So we crush crush kegs of Bikini Blonde every week. Um, we've got you know Big Swell IPA. Interestingly enough, like the as I said, like the alternative beers, like the, the pineapple cider from Ola, uh, the Maui Pog hard seltzers do really, really well. Um, we even have some hard kombuchas, the June Shine on our menu, and those actually move pretty well too. So we're seeing that, that shift. Um, and plus, you know, it's like we're right there and people are hopping on boats and yeah. stuff like that. So they don't want to get, I mean, I think, you know, they don't want to get totally wrecked before they get on a boat. Right. Some people. Oh, some <laughs> of those people, they didn't, they're not looking. They think, oh, I'll keep it light. I'm going to have this hard kombucha. And you're like, well, it's a little bit of alcohol in there. Uh, <laughs> right. You're not really keeping it that light. Yeah. You know, but it's, it's uh, their, their it. perception of it. They're like, oh, I'm good. I'll drink four seltzers. I won't be drunk, you know. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, you think about when you opened your very first place to now the amount of local selection. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm limited at Coco Head because we don't have, it's a tiny, tiny right, space. Right. We don't have taps. We don't, we barely have refrigeration. So we're limited by just our refrigeration space in terms of the beer that we're able to offer. But um, I think what was amazing was being here on Oahu. And I mean, I've collaborated with both Beer Lab and uh, Lani Kai Brewing and created two beers that I love and I would love to make again. 
Um, and I was, you know, they were both focused on local ingredients. Yep. And that was just such an amazing opportunity just to like work with people who are passionate about creating Hawaiian style beer. Right. I think it's, it's kind of cool because you can actually like, you know, we don't really have wineries here. You know, we have some some up on, on up country. Up in but, Maui. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, it's cool because, I mean, that's one thing here where it's like you can collaborate as, as a chef and then with farmers and then with a manufacturer who's producing something. It's one of those like unique things that we have going on. Um, Beautiful synergy to make something that everybody loves. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think when you get really talented brewers and chefs with really great palates and noses, really great things can happen. Oh, absolutely. Just that combo. I mean, you, you're going to find something you like, but I mean, and something you don't, you've never thought of, yeah. put it together and let somebody else do all the work for you. So <laughs> on that, speaking of food, um, we're going to need to reload on snacks. So we're going to come back in a little bit. <laughs> Go get yourself a snack. We'll see you in a second. The Art of Beer is brought to you by Growler Hawaii. 100 taps of great beer and other beverages. Stop in for some drink, food, and fun. Growler Hawaii, located at 449 Kapahulu. Welcome back to The Art of Beer. We're here with Leanne Wong from Cocoa Head Cafe and Papa Aina in Lahaina. Uh, we're going to open another beer. One of the greatest beers, maybe, of all time. Uh, this is Orval. And you've never had Orval, so this is this is amazing. I, I, have, I have looked at it. I have I've seen it on menus. I've never sampled it. Oh, that's so fantastic. this is my first. So Dave and I actually, uh, two two years really? ago, we had the opportunity to actually travel um, to Orval, which is in in southern Belgium, kind of really close to the French border. Um, so it's a trap. It's a Trappist. Um, brewery and that's basically um, it's run by monks it's a monastery um, all of the brewing happens within the monastery grounds and there's only about 14 Trappist breweries in the world and the cool thing about Orval they only make one beer and this is it I think you know it's it's the total opposite of American craft brewing where you know they're making you know 14 beers a, a day um, these guys make one beer one beer only and it's this, and it's never changed in almost 100 years. It's going to be about 100 And, and what do they use the profits of beer for? So the, a lot of the profits go either back into the monastery, they go back into the community. So they're... The original nonprofit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's meant to be a self-sustaining operation, right? So they also, Orval makes cheese and bread um, that they don't export, obviously. But it's all of the things that they make there. It's, it goes back to, you know, they're, they're supposed to work with their hands, they're supposed to do things. Now, there's a lot of civilians that come in and do the work because it is sort of a big operation. But it's interesting, Orval is, it's as you can find it almost everywhere in the world. Except for Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't make a lot of it. You and can that's find it at village bottle shops. Yeah. <laughs> I think they said only like 2% of the production yeah. comes to the United States. Yeah, yeah. most of it stays in, in Belgium and France and, and really close by. But the crazy thing is, is their monastery, it has to be within the walls of the monastery. And so the brewery can't get any bigger. And the demand for the beer keeps growing year on year on year. But the production stays exactly the same. So As it, should. it won't change. And so the beer is getting harder and harder to get over time. But it's, it's just, a, I mean, it's a beautiful beer. I think what's interesting is, is just in, in hearing this and... Um, I love Belgian ales, I love Belgian sours especially, but um, is like, is there the next generation of like Belgian Trappist monks coming up to like make beer? <laughs> like no, that's, that's really the crazy thing is um, there's a lot of these Trappist breweries, um, whether it be West Mala or um, at Orval, there, there's just not a lot of people joining the church. It's, a, and, it's and a life of celibacy. It's, it's exactly. Solitude. And you're you're exactly. communing with God, and it's yeah, these, making beer. But like, yeah, they don't do much, and so kinda... some of these some of these abbeys have like six monks, and that's it. You know, and and so it's there's a there's a uh, there's a possibility that some of them might not be around in fifty years just because there's nobody joining to do that, which. I don't blame them. I wouldn't want to do it either. So enjoy them while you can. Yeah, exactly. this, this craft beer is very much like the tale of Japanese knife making. It's, it, it's an art that could yeah. be soon lost, right? Cheers. But this, this is... Um, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's your first sip? Yeah. See what yes. I said? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I literally like, am just getting a hit like I'm like... 
almost like eating a cured ham. It's that back funk of like almost like a cured Spanish ham. Yeah. Or prosciutto. That's what I'm tasting is that umami. And it's, it's so crazy. It's 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 an it's ultimate food beer because it's dry, it's crisp. It, there's a ton going on. It a lot of carbonation, cleans your palate. It's but, also a really great gateway beer for people who don't like sours. Yeah. Because they do two different fermentations. So without getting too geeky on this, they use an ale yeast to make the beer. But when they bottle, they pitch with a sour yeast. So the bubbles all come from production from the yeast eating sugar inside the bottle. And this beer is unique because it actually has a five-year shelf life, and the beer will continue to get more effervescent and more sour as time goes on. Do we know, have, have, have the people who produce this, have they shared their knowledge with the rest of the world? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually a pretty simple beer mm -hmm. as far as ingredients goes. Um, I think there's a lot of, I don't know if they've actually shared it publicly, um, I'm just saying, like, trade secret with, within the industry, you know what I mean? Just, yeah. Just the idea of passing on the information or the If technique. they have, they probably mm -hmm. don't publicize that they told somebody about but the it. Thing so there's with, a good chance uh, that they might have. The thing with this is um, it's yeast-driven, right? So the Brettanomyces strain of sort of yeast that they use, the it, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's there, it's living, and they continually use it. So there's people who are, like, try to harvest it from the bottle and reproduce it, but... It's also just a classic tradition, right? It's like sometimes things made in one place can only be made in one place. Um, and that's that's just the, the way it is with this beer. That's why it's so perfect. It is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite. Yeah. Well, we're going to keep drinking this perfect beer. We're going to come back in a couple minutes with Leanne Wong from Cocoa Head Cafe and Papa Ina. The Art of Beer is brought to you by Value Furniture. Has over 10,000 items from acclaimed designers to make furnishing your home easy. Create something beautiful with value. Beachside Roofing, the leaders. Right on, welcome back. Let's pop a bottle. Let's do it. Thing to do. All right, so we're gonna crack open Degar. Um, this is another Belgian ale. And um, I don't know, none of you guys have had this, so I'm kind of stoked that everybody's trying this. This is a, a Belgian triple style, um, brewed by um, a brewery. What's cool about it in Belgium is most, and it's going to have a lot of head on it, right? Okay. It's a, it's a highly, car yeah, highly <laughs> carbonated beer. So this beer is made for a very small beer cafe in Bruges um, by the same name, Degar. There's no sign. It's on a, down a side alley. It's got a just random door. And it's a very small, but it's a very small place, but it's been there forever. Um, and um, Van Steenberg, the brewery, makes this beer just for that bar. Uh, about a couple years ago, they started exporting it because there was a lot of demand for it, but it's still in really small quantities. What's cool in Belgium is a lot of times you don't know the brewery's name. It's all about the brand, right? So Van Steenberg makes Guldendrock. They make Pirat, right? But you've never heard the name of the brewery, right? And it's not because it's not yeah. about it's not about the, the brewery <laughs> name, right? It's about the brand. So they so this one brewery will make multiple brands and the brewery just kind of stays anonymous. So Dogar is one of those brands, but this is another one where you have this with any really good meal and it's just excellent and it's an exquisite bottle, right? You bring it out, we talked about earlier, like, you know, there's a- it's great. I, I get the funk on the nose. I mean, I haven't mm. even tasted it yet and I'm already excited about this thing, yeah. And it's big. I mean, this is a, this is a, a heavier, higher alcohol beer, but it just drinks beautiful. It's got a touch of sweetness. So it drinks like beer cake. Yeah. That's like the first thing that I'm like, I'm like, beer cake! Yeah. That's beer how cake. I felt. My birthday's yeah. coming up. Yeah. Beer cake. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing what they can do with these beers. And it's, it goes through a secondary fermentation in the bottle. So it's going to have that higher bubble. That's why it's got a corking cage. You know, I'd say it's very carbonated. Oh, very much so. I mean, just looking at the bottom of the glass more than... So the, at, the, at, the, at Degar, they only can, they only, there's a three glass limit. Because it's it's really drinkable, right? And it's I think it's upwards of twelve percent in alcohol, but eleven percent. Eleven percent, yeah. <laughs> so at the bar, they started instituting a three glass limit because people would keep drinking it, and then you know they bombed. Just, yeah, it, it was a mess, right? <laughs> I mean, not a, the worst thing in the world. I mean, I know many people, male and female alike, who pound bottles of wine. So yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. No, I, you can only have three glasses, but you can't have four martinis, right? I mean, <laughs> exactly. 
But I mean, you know, that's another thing that, you know, you're, you're talking about culture, right, and beer culture. And American beer culture, and in terms of bar, as far as we've known it, has always been like, draft, can, yeah. slam your beer, buy two, get one free. And we haven't treated it like wine, yeah. which really, we're at a point like American is le Americans are leading the world in craft beer. Oh, absolutely. You know, and so I, I always think it's amazing when, you know, you are able to pull off getting that really unique wine and then, or sorry, beer, excuse me, and then treating it like wine yeah. and being able to, to actually have a group of people that as a, as a whole can appreciate appreciate that and all the nuances of, of the beer and like how it's going to pair with food. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you said that because a lot of times from the bar, behind the bar, it's people drink the beer and they're like, hurry up and finish your beer or food's coming. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm like, no, 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 save the beer. You know, so yeah. it's become kind of a, a, a place in the culture of hurry up and drink the beer. Yeah. The food's yeah. here. I mean, that's, that's opposite. I mean, there's beers that you don't have to go. Yeah. You don't have to do wine every time. Yeah, no. Many, many times I'll opt for beer with my dinner. Yeah. But I think it's it's also like as a culture, it's always been within post prohibition. It's been you know it's just mass quantity, yeah. right? Where you know in other countries it's always been a staple and it's part it's ingrained on the table, right? Whereas you know you don't you, you savor this and you take your time and and it's it's a little bit more complex and there's a lot more going on and and you're meant to like kind of just hang around, sit, drink, sip, you know. Yeah, it's, I mean, this kind of beer I could sit and have for half an hour plus. Yeah. You know, and sit here with a glass and just enjoy it. It can get a little warmer and it's gonna get a little better. Yeah. You know, I just, and don't have to rush through your beer. No, and then, you, <laughs> and then your food comes out and you yeah. continue to drink and eat it, right? I mean, we're not gonna shotgun this. <laughs> well, we are, but we're gonna save it for the extended edition. You know? Well, speaking of the extended version, join us on YouTube, and we're going to keep hanging out with Leanne Wong and drinking some more beers. Cheers. 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 Thanks, for coming. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Hey, thank you guys. Thanks for joining us at the Art of Beer extended version here on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. We're here with Leanne Wong from Papa Aina and Coco Head Cafe, and we're drinking Degar. Beautiful beers. I think she. Great beer. Mine's gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. It's those pistachios. From, it's pretty amazing. From that amazing place. You know, the one thing I don't think we've touched on too much about beer culture that's, I think it's happened a lot more in the mainland, but it's starting to happen here sure. as we get more beers that are collectible and, you know, you can age. Tim, you've shared a couple of beers with us that have been from your cellar um, that aren't really available here, but with the bottle share idea where people get together and they bring, you know, you've got the bottles that sit in your, you've got that. A beer you've been aging for three years. Yeah. So I've got something in my, you know, in the back corner that I haven't drank for a while. I want to open up, but I want to open up with people that really appreciate those beers. Sounds competitive. <laughs> <laughs> Might be. <laughs> but it's also just fun, you know. It's, and you can't drink a 750 of 12 percent beer by yourself and you know enjoy the next day, but you can share it with some friends for a couple hours, and it's really rad. But I also think that. That, that concept of sharing the beers will become less of a competition, you say competitive, yeah. than when the, the whiskey groups get together about like, oh, I've had this oh, one yeah. that I yeah. bought here. That one can soar a little. But with the beer guys, it's like, you gotta drink this, you gotta well, drink this, I and mean, you're excited to share. Well, that's the whole thing is that I, I find that like collectors of beer are very unique. And my husband's a collector of beer, so we'll get, you know, he'll get some, um, you know, like the, the liquid aloha the Ulu one. He like, mm -hmm. he aged, he put one in a barrel and aged it. Like, <laughs> he like shelf aged it. I think he left one outside to age it. And I'm just like, you know, it, it, it's, it's, I think trying to find those, that group of people that share that passion is hard. Cause most people are like, yeah, I just want to go buy a six pack. Like, you know, so it's but finding the collectors is, yeah. I think that's I've like, also found like, it's fun to, share stuff with people who might be like that, right? right like, cause right. I mean, like a lot of my friends I grew up with, you know, that they're, they're not always into that kind of stuff, but then I show up with a certain things and they're like, oh my God, it's amazing. And then it's surprising because someone like, oh, St. Bernard is 12. Like that's, a, that's my jam. I love so that. It takes one really good beer experience. And then yeah. everything changes. Yeah. yeah. And for wine drinkers, this is the beer. You yeah. can turn people into beer drinkers. Yeah. With, this is one of my, happening. one of my, like beer experiences where why I love this one so much is sitting in a room with the two of you were the ones that introduced me to that and you gave me the story, the backstory. And, and that's, I've 
gone with this style since then, and I really enjoy it, and I look for ways to enjoy it more, and I think it takes that one defining beer experience. So, Jeff, you got a defining beer experience? Um, hmm, I, I tell you, I've, I've had many. I'm trying, yeah. to, I'm trying to remember them. We're, we're thinking about uh, the ones early, that we really want on. to tell people about. We don't want to tell them. I mean, you know, early on, so I grew up in upstate New York, right, and I... We had in high school what we called fifth hole parties, right? We had a golf course in, in upstate Troy, New York. <laughs> I'm sure these fifth hole parties are still going on. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was this thing where you'd go pay five bucks for a solo cup and like drink a keg of like really crappy light beer, you know, like really, really cheap crappy light beer. And so when I became relatively still underage to drink, um, I was like, I'm not gonna drink this crappy light beer. Like my thing was like, oh, I'm gonna be into like Bass and Killian's Red and Guinness. And so I really moved towards those heavier things. And like, yeah, my first foray into whiskey was scotch. Went the other way around. Um, but you know, you know, and so it's, yeah. So, 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 you know, beer for me is like, I've, I, I think that in, in my, my my wisdom and my my older age i've come to really appreciate the lighter style beers i think just in terms of not drinking it for any particular wanting any particular outcome but for really just you know to accompany food and to quench yeah. my thirst and and just really you, how you perceive drinking alcohol and especially something like beer you know it, it's you know at you you learn to appreciate things that you didn't before and I think our the industry is is changing in such a way that it's just fascinating and just when you go into the supermarket now you have so much choice yeah. you have so much choice and occasionally I'll get pissed off if I go in and they don't have Coors Banquet you know <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just like what is all this newfangled beer like what were the classics options for seltzers yeah so. you know? <laughs> <laughs> and light beer and the appreciation for it is something that we the three of us have talked about before yeah. as when you make a lighter style, even if you go craft, it's not just easy. It's not you don't just throw it in a can and give it to people. So when you get a lighter style beer and it's done very well, you have the appreciation. You're saying this is great light. I style. mean, it, and and that's something that like when you're when you're a brewer or you're you know like you, it's like you're you're testing the market. You're like, that's I mean that's ultimately what we want to do with food is we want to create loyal customers. We want to be like that go to place it's yeah. like you want to be that go-to beer yep. for anybody and everybody and that's really it is just you know they're definitely I've tried some beers where I'm just like one and done it was amazing it's fun. But, but you can't have more than one you still you got know? that barley wine around here <laughs> <laughs> that's, a well, one I think that's, a, that's the thing with some of these beers it's like you know I we don't drink these beers every night all the time right but you don't <laughs> <laughs> you know I'd but, like at, to, but at the but end of the day you know it's like there's there, it's fun every once in a while to have the exploration and, and have something you know you're having one glass of something right versus there's nothing wrong with sometimes having you know a couple of light pilsners you know and that's and that's sort of what that's what everybody does right yeah well, but I think then it's mixing it up we're well, not unique but I think that's one thing that we all try to do too is like we're curating part of the reason people come to see us is we're curating that list of things that people like we think these things are great and they're great with your food or they're great with sitting by the pool or they're yeah. great with a steak or they're you have seven you have 700 skews they're great with whatever <laughs> <laughs> like you can curate whatever for the somebody when you take it home. but sometimes you just want that one thing or you want that four ounce pour to just to try that beer because it's it's one chance to try it and it's yeah. something. I, years ago I always thought I mean, I'm talking 12 plus to 15 years plus. I thought it was kind of a hokey thing to do the beer, the small glass, small glass, small glass, because I was typical local Hawaii guy. Like, pour mine to the top, because I'm paying <laughs> four bucks for this, and I only have <laughs> six bucks, so I want as much beer as I can get in a glass. And so that's my whole life, town, life, um, life mentality of drinking beer was give me as much as possible. for as And then when you get into these styles and you really start appreciating, you're like, man, I would love to have three ounces of five different beers in front of me. <laughs> like, well, I mean, so you think about like marketing, right? And, and that's, I'm always, I'm always stunned. And I'll just say this outright because people are so religious about breakfast and like what they order and what they eat. And I'm like, you flew across an ocean. <laughs> <laughs> to get fucking scrambled eggs. To get scrambled eggs and bacon. <laughs> you waited in line to get in my restaurant for an hour to get the same eggs and bacon. Get it home. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand it. 
Um, but you know, I found that over time and, and, and like, yeah, I love a good like sampler of beer. I love a good sampler of like just the opportunity to, to taste and try. And, and that's the benefit is like, you're not committed to drinking an entire, you know, yeah. eight, 10, 12, 16 ounces of it. Like, you know, you're just drinking a couple ounces and, and that's the best value is just in the experience and just being able to try something new. And when it's curated well, when you get somebody that lines it up for you where you start from this side yeah. to this side, it just kind of rolls into this great harmony and you're just, by the time you get to the end, you're just super happy and super satisfied. And I think you have to do that in the beer world because the flavors, I always say like, you know, not, not to pigeon, like make, make wine sound simplistic, but you know, you, you have very similar flavors in wine, right? Whereas beer, you can go from something as light as, you know, a, uh, a Coors Light to something as complex as a Orval or all the way to things that taste like dessert beers, right? Like we had some dessert beers. It's complete, and to something that's like sour. And, and so being able to taste things, oh, I like that, I don't like that, you know, and that's the beauty of having those little things because it's all about exploration, right? Finding out what you like, what you don't like. Oh, I never knew something could taste like that. And I think that's the really cool thing about with the beer world and, and where American craft brewing has kind of taken things is like, we're gonna experiment the hell out of stuff yeah. and figure out what works, what doesn't. We're gonna throw the kitchen sink in there. Some of it sucks, but some of it's like- Some of great. Some of it blows your mind like, holy shit, I never so, would have thought to do that. <laughs> so I made a beer with Steve from Lonnie Kai and I, I didn't know what style it would be. We kind of, we riffed on some ideas, but I was like, these are the ingredients. I'm like, I want macadamia nuts. I want pandan leaf, pandanus leaf. I want Hawaiian vanilla, and I want sea salt. And those were the the four markers of what I wanted. And he, we ended up with a nut brown ale that was so smooth and so delicious and so, like just. I had no idea and it was amazing. And then when it was gone, I was really upset, you know? Do it again. But you're like, I gotta drink it, you know? It's like, I can't let this sit, right. I have to drink it. Your husband didn't buy a case and drunk the We did, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone, because we're just like, well, we, I think we might have a bottle sounds, like, stuffed under our bed somewhere. It just sounds but. great, I didn't get to try it, but brown ales, where you get a hint of nuttiness in there. Yeah, and the, the nuts, the, the sea salt, so you know. Just, Sounds fantastic. Yeah, so it's just, I, I mean, we have, and then I think the one I did with um, Beer Lab was Lilacoy and Lemongrass yeah. based. And that was just so bright. It was a, a sour, sour style. And, you know, that was like, again, perfect for what we do at brunch. And, and like, so, you know, beer shouldn't just be the thirst quencher. <laughs> beer should be. <laughs> yeah, beer should be. Right. Um, I'm going to give my palate a jump start. Part of the <laughs> meal. Cheers. Chili pepper water? Oh. Pepper water. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Ah, salty. That is delicious. Okay, so we'll do one more. We'll do the bread of ice from Firestone Walker. So. Oh, is this, that's yours. No, no, that's it. Oh, this you poured yours. it. Yeah, I poured oh, yours. Okay. <laughs> so, this beer is rad. Um, the company that makes it's rad. Um, the guy who makes it's rad. Um, he's my buddy Jim Crooks at Barrel Works um, in Buellton. Um, they, you know, everybody knows Firestone Walker for their their hoppy beers, but what they do down in Buellton, which is just mm. north of Santa Barbara, is unbelievable. And they, this is cool because it's, it's a German style sour beer, but they kind of started to make it more of a traditional way. It's sour, it's tart, but there's so much fruit characteristic, there's no fruit in it. It's Interesting. Just, it's all barrel. I was got like yeast. apricot. Yeah, yeah. just stone fruit, uh, all yeah, the way, it's all, all the way stone way fruit, right? And you think about it, it's like they're in Buellton, which is like northern, um, like Santa Barbara County. There's a lot of stone fruit around there, but there's no fruit in this. And it's, it's just an amazing beer. It takes time, it takes like, the, the amount of work that goes into making this is no different than making like a world-class wine because it takes months in a barrel and testing every barrel and tasting it and blending them. But, you know, it's stuff like that where people, I don't think sometimes people understand. Can I ask you guys something kind of weird and ignorant? Is, yes, please. Is, mm -hmm. is, 
I, and I don't actually know if there's a right or wrong answer to this, but is like, is beer more forgiving than wine or is it vice versa when it comes to like temperature fluctuation and you know what I mean? It, it depends on the style of beer. So for the lagers, I mean, you, you, there's a range. For every type of beer, there's a range, right? And I think it's the same thing with wine. Like there's a, there's a set of parameters and once you get past that, things can get a little weird, right? And it's the same thing in beer. And, and sometimes in beer, you don't want funky flavors and sometimes in beer, you want funky flavors. So like in this, it's on purpose, it's supposed to be a little tart. Yeah, and but was it a happy accident? You know what I yeah. mean? Well, so. like this isn't, this was like, this was a purposeful, like I want this to be tart and acidic, yeah. but what they do is they dial in the acidity. Like I want it to be just there. That's where I want the acidity, not here, not there. I want it to be there. Um, there's other beers where they just let it go. And it's where, where does nature take it? And those are rad too, because it's sort of like, what's nature gonna do with Would it? you call it a wild beer? It's kind of like natural wine, yeah. right? It's yeah. like Holy natural wine, wine. Yeah. <laughs> Squeeze the grapes, put them in barrels, wait. Well, and wait, let's put see it where bottle, it goes, you know? I mean, and, and don't filter, like, let, yeah, and, and sometimes you get that, and sometimes that, the pH is like, it's peeling the enamel off your teeth. And, and sometimes, sometimes you it's, make vinegar, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and sometimes yeah. you dump barrels, you know? But, but that's, that's the trial and tribulations, and you have to have a really good place to where like, no, this is shit. I'm dumping it. Yeah. And, they're, and they're willing, willing to go through that process. Like, yeah. take you a don't, chance. Like, fuck it. Let's just do this, and we'll taste it in a year or six months, and we'll see where we're at, and go from there, and then we'll try it again. Yeah. You know, a lot of breweries, if you're too like profit driven or something, yeah, you're not exactly. going to take that time. But if you're about the craft and the passion, you will, because you won't be able to sleep at night if you don't know. You know, you have to. You have to find out. And, and that's the amazing thing I think in like in, in like the craft culture that's developed in the US is now all of a sudden you can go all around the country and and take you know find like wild like fermented beers that are just unreal. I mean you just, and, and and only in America where it's you're allowed to throw the kitchen sink because there's no traditions, right? Whereas in, in Belgium and, and, and say in Germany, like you're kinda with you kinda stuck to a certain tradition, like or in England. Or in America, that's why the craft brewing world started was they're like oh fuck it i can do whatever i want blank canvas yeah it's like Put hey your you own know. paint on it you know wait i can throw grapefruit in ipa <laughs> let's do it you know where was else that, in the world was that sam adams like <laughs> <laughs> i i brought my own contribution from the abc store so yes i i will tell you we talked about it yesterday i was like wait we got Chef Lehan coming, we should have a bottle of Maker's Mark. <laughs> and and then ran out the ran out of the door this morning without it. So um, luckily Chef brings her own, so Yeah. You gotcha. Prepared. Cheers. Cheers guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for, for being me. here. Cheers. I do love whiskey. So that's another cool thing. I mean like beer pairs perfectly. That's pretty good pairing. You no, know, it pairs With perfectly. The, yes. Absolutely. The sour with with beer, like with with whiskey, yeah, right? Like honey notes in there. Yeah, and we used to do that. We 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 worked on this whole thing for a while, where it's and we still do it. And I think it's because of, he he helped us start it, where it's finding whiskeys and different you know like flavors that pair with the beer. And you go like, hey, if you try this, try it with a wheat beer. It's a long lost art of boilermaker. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, boilermaker now has become. Yes. Take a shot of bad whiskey and pound a beer so you don't taste it, but it was invented to have complement each other. You yeah. got a great whiskey and a great beer. Take one, yeah. take a sip of the other. I mean, that's... And it, it, it was super forth. fun to do that, too, because uh -huh. we would taste these whiskeys and sort of end our day at that point, but it was really like, we'd be like, oh, I think this will go with this. And sometimes you pull a beer and you're like, that's going to be good. And you're like, that is not. That is weird. It, it was just like your palate would be you, just what you thought it was going to do. Fireball just doesn't go with anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, but I think that's on the word. Anything. I thought that was on the exactly. prohibited words of this man. <laughs> Peanut butter whiskey, what was I thinking? <laughs> But then we other times we saw a lot it. of that. Um, <laughs> I, too, I will not understand it. <laughs> Get rid of all your Chambord at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pro, pro tip right there. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> PBJs all day. PBJ all day. Uh, <laughs> wow, all day rosé. Watch out. PBJ all, all day. day. PBJ. Well, sometimes, again, it's like you're flying all the way across the country to 
drink the same thing that you always drink, right? I, I just, I, I'm, yeah, I, I think I'm very fascinated by that, and I think the choices that you know I want to make for my businesses in the future I do focus on local and do focus on. I think what's amazing is being here in the state of Hawaii and finding all the people such as yourselves who are so passionate about beer and being from New York. I love going into like Village Bottle and just being like. I literally came with an empty carry-on because I, I go home with bottles of beer for my husband that we cannot get in Maui. We miss seeing you guys. Yeah, we cannot get in Maui, and it's like, yeah, I got to go to Whole Foods in Maui. And, right. You know, tomorrow's okay, but, like, it's just, it's not the same. And I think what's so much fun about it, and, and I'm, you know, to an extent, like, I went to art school. My husband's an artist. He's a graphic designer. Like, I love going in and just looking at the labels. Yeah. I just love how fun and smart and creative and just, I mean, hip. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly, right? Hip, you know, the yeah. labels are. And it's just, we we eat with our eyes first, always, yeah. you know? But then when serious beer drinkers, we're looking for great styles, we're looking for technique, we're looking for history, craft, great ingredients, you know? I mean, it's and all the same can things. Get them both. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's fantastic. So I'm. I, I'm so excited. I, I tried the Orval today, so thank you guys. Like, it was great. World class. So next time I come to Maui, I'm going to bring a big suitcase full of beer for you then. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. That seems like the rule. I will feed you. <laughs> yep. It's oh. like, you need something in your glass. Yep, nice. the bottoms. That's the best part right there. Well, you know what? Thank you again for Thanks, joining us. Thank you, It is a pleasure. Thank you so much. Take care.